Hudson, Nashua Airport Authority Board of Directors. Uh, my name appears on your agenda tonight, so I thought I'd, I'd come <coughs> before the board. If you folks have any questions for me, uh, when my name comes up, please ask away. Thank you. All right. Uh, any other further public comment? Seeing none, um, I'm going to move forward with our uh, interviews portion of the evening. And <clears throat> we'll start with the Business and Industrial Development Authority. Uh, Deborah Novantny, I think I pronounced that correct. Novantny. Please come, please come forward. Yes, no, you can have a seat right there. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and I'm going to turn uh, the floor over to Ms. Kleiner. Uh, thank you very much, Alderman Clemens, members of the board. Um, the mayor is um, extremely um, grateful to Ms. Novotny for stepping forward for this appointment, um, including her work history as senior vice president at Enterprise Bank, and then looking at the number of positions that she has held um, through the community, including her current president with the National Rotary Club, um, we are very fortunate to have her step forward to be a member of BIDA. Um, and it was something that the mayor felt very strongly about, um, having her appointed because of her extensive work experience um, and her knowledge of our community. Wonderful. Um, Ms. Navani, please uh, introduce yourself to the committee. Absolutely, thank you. Um, again, I'm Debbie Navani, and I have lived in Nashua um, all my life. I currently work at Enterprise Bank here in Nashua. I'm a commercial lender, and I've been in banking for about 32 years. Um, my family lives here. My husband's from the area as well, and both my kids are here. Great. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> I am going to open it up uh, to the floor for questions or comments. Uh, would anybody like to ask a question or have any comments this evening? I would just say, um, you know, I, I read your resume. Uh, it was very impressive. Um, I come from a lending background myself. So, um, you know, I, it's, it's an interesting industry. That's, that's for sure. Um, but I think, uh, I think it speaks to uh, the type of knowledge that um, to have somebody with a local presence uh, particularly in the lending industry, I think is a, is, will be a good um, thing to have on this committee. And uh, I think, you know, I think the mayor made a right choice. So thank you very much. Thank you. Alderman Lopez. A handful of uh, board memberships on my favorite nonprofits. So <laughs> Boys and Girls Club, Marguerite's Place, the Learning Center. I think it sounds like you've done a lot of good and, and the community you've been working really hard. So I think it'll be great to have that perspective on the board. Anything further? Okay, well, thank you very much for coming this evening, and we will take up your appointment in just a bit. Uh, next, we have the Citizens Advisory Commission for Community Grants. Um, and there are several appointments by the mayor and a couple of appointments by the president of the Board of Aldermen. So <clears throat> to make things smooth, I would ask everyone uh, who is an appointee <coughs> to please come forward, and Ms. Marshawn, please come forward as well. Do you want to read all the names? Yeah, we can. Yeah. Citizens Advisory Commission for Community Grants, Michael Apfelberg, Jennifer Bishop Saucier, <laughs> Patricia Casey, Michael Joseph, Jason Talerski, and Beth Quam Totem. Quam Totem, I'm sorry. Great, thank you. Uh, I'm going to uh, turn it over to uh, Ms. Marsha. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Um, we would like to start tonight by saying the mayor is very thankful for all of you coming forward and volunteering for this committee, as am I. Uh, we're looking forward to a little bit of a revision with the alderman just passing a new procedure, and so we're excited to get started. So thank you so much for coming forward or coming back. And so the first person I'd like to introduce is uh, Mike Appleberg, who was um, appointed to the CAC last year. So he was here just a year ago and has agreed to come back tonight 
Um, and so he's a currently the president of the United Way Greater Nashua and has quite the resume of experience in entrepreneurial and volunteerism. And I'll let him introduce himself. Well, good evening. Thank you for having me there this evening. This is an honor. Um, I reside at 7 Edson Street in <coughs> Nashua, Ward 3, um, have for the past 11 years, and am, as uh, Sarah said, currently president of the United Way of Greater Nashua, and prior to that, owned a business up on Broad Street for about 10 years with my wife and daughter as a family business. And I would entertain any questions that you might have. Thank you. Would you like to continue, Ms. Marsha? Oh, um, this next one is actually Alderman McCarthy's, I think. Jennifer Bishop. Oh, okay. If you, if why don't, why don't we do this? Why don't we just go around, uh, and we'll go that way, and we'll have everybody introduce themselves. So, my turn. Your turn. Michael you Joseph, uh, resident of Nashua, recently moved to 184 Main Street, uh, <coughs> in Ward Four, and um, I was I was asked invited to um, to come tonight. I have done work with various um, community organizations in the past uh, on a voluntary basis. Um, namely, uh, one of my biggest positions, uh, well, it wasn't a position, it was a voluntary position as president of the one of the busiest St. Vincent de Paul chapters in the state of New Hampshire, which is, which, uh, is at St. Joseph Cathedral in Manchester, uh, where we can see up to, they can see up to 15 clients a night who need assistance. So that's some of my, I, I've also volunteered for um, One Greater Nashua and have worked with um, 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 Galena Sokach um, to, to enter into the possibility of being a, a navigator for new, new folks in town. Um, and I'm my 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 uh, occupation right now is that I'm I am the cantor, which is also known as choir director, at at Christ the King Lutheran Church, at uh, Three Lutheran Drive, across from Broad Street School. Um, so, basically, that's my great my situation. Thank you, Jason Talerski. Uh, I've lived in Nashua for 15 years. Um, my, with, uh, my family, I have three children, uh, two of which are at Nashua South right now. Uh, one has uh, recently graduated from Nashua school system. I work at Fidelity Investments in Merrimack as a director of software engineering and development. And, um, thank you very much for having me here. Thank you. My name is Patricia Casey. I live at 15 Pine Hill Avenue in Ward 3 in Nashua. We've been residents here for a little over 14 years, my husband and I, and our two children, who are both uh, still in school. And um, I've both worked for, consulted with, and volunteered with any number of agencies in this community. Excellent. Hi, I'm Beth Tajam. Um, we've been residents of Nashua for 35 years. Um, moved here from Ohio and have raised our two daughters here. They're both graduates of Nashua High School, um, one from South and one from the new school. She was she graduated that year. Um, I've been involved in the, the community for almost <coughs> since the day we arrived. I live in Ward 1, um, and I guess I'm, when you look at it, when it was called review and comment, I'm kind of the senior member <laughs> at this point. <laughs> So, and I look forward to having the opportunity to serve under the new scheme of things. Great. Hi, I'm Jennifer Bishop Saucier. I'm at, um, I just forgot my address. <laughs> <laughs> I've been there forever. I'm at 359 Main Street. So I'm right down, right down that way. Um, I've been here since I was a kid. I went to Birch Hill Elementary School. My kiddos go to Sunset Heights. They're 11 and 7. Um, I've been working in Nashua since I graduated from UNH, um, doing case management for juvenile probation, and then I went into uh, the Division for Children, Youth, and Families doing investigations um, in Nashua in our catchment <coughs> area. Um, then I went back to school and got my master's degree in social work, and I was able to do a lot of internships with um, one with Greater Nashua doing independent therapy with um, our... Um, significantly mentally ill elderly population, which was really neat. And then I was able to go into a leadership development program um, with the maternal child health um, 
the Maternal Child and Health Bureau, uh, where I was <coughs> able to be on the uh, New Hampshire Council for Developmental Disabilities doing policy advocacy up at the state. And I was also able to hone my skills at autism spectrum disorder evaluation and testing with the START team out of Dartmouth and Lebanon. And now I am a social worker over at Southern New Hampshire, again, right down the street. <laughs> so I am a Nashua native and I look forward to making our country grow. City, or city grow, sorry, my dreams are big. <laughs> right again. Awesome. Well, we, we certainly have some, uh, some very diverse talent uh, here this evening. Uh, and I'm going to open it up um, for questions uh, and comments. Alderman Karen. Yes, thank you. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you all for agreeing. Uh, Mike and Bev have been on the uh, board for one year, but this year is a lot of changes coming up. So I was wondering if you all know what this committee actually does and uh, the time constraints that it will require for you to sit on this particular committee. It is, um, I think it is very special and unique to the city that we're able to help our agencies so that we can help our citizens throughout the city. So if anybody would like to answer it other than you, Mike. What about Beth? <laughs> oh, Beth. <laughs> <laughs> I hear them all the time. Um, but I would like to hear that. But I think it's great that we have such a diverse group that is willing to sit on, on this committee with us. Anybody would like to start? Comment or it's not required, but <laughs> well, I understand that there are several subcommittees. There are three subcommittees uh, that function from this body, and that um, obviously there's, that implies that there's some variety. So um, I would like to be able to serve in, on the one that I feel can where I can do the most good from my experience. I did mention also that I was a public school educator for a number of years as a, as a music teacher. So um, I have a lot of experience working with needy folks in that sense. Yes. So um, the revised committee is um, is actually, we don't, we've kind of eliminated the subcommittees. Oh, you have? And okay. We are looking for a really mm -hmm. diverse group, which I think you guys have just shown us around this horseshoe, <laughs> um, a group, diverse group of people with the diverse backgrounds to help evaluate all of the applications mm -hmm. that come in. Um, and so the main commitment is from um, end of January through April. It's about four months, a little bit less, um, and it's not an every week thing, but um, there certainly will be a lot of time at home for you to, <laughs> to review applications and then to come together as a group mm -hmm. to discuss, to evaluate, there's evaluations um, mm -hmm. and working together with um, Carrie Skeena, who is the Urban Programs Manager, and myself as well. Um, my, my question, um, sort of a, a throw this out there um, how do you see the benefit of this citizen advisory group um, with its change <coughs> as opposed to the way that it was in the past and I'll and I'll I'll put that to both of you as as some been a, being on the committee before um, and Beth I guess I'll start with you I think that the change is good because in the past, what's happened is we did have the smaller groups, and it was always a challenge on how to divide the money up in a way to go to those smaller groups and then make sure that each of the agencies who were qualified for getting money or were asking for money got a, f I, I don't want to say a fair share, because but that's not what we're all about. We're you know, trying to match the money to the need and the, mm -hmm. the ability of the agencies to meet that need. But it was just, it was too broken up. Um, so I think that while I'm anticipating having to review all the applications could be a lot different rather than mm -hmm. six or seven. Right. Uh, I believe that having the total picture and being able to really evaluate the programs across the board will be a more efficient way and probably a more equitable way of getting the money out that is going to make a difference in the community. Great. Yeah, I would echo, echo that. I would reflect on our deliberations last year where each of us dove into a specific set subset of grants 
and then came back together to <laughs> argue the relative merits of each of those proposals that we had reviewed, uh, at no point was it clear to any of us what the totality of the proposals looked like. Mm -hmm. And this is an opportunity, while it's a lot of, it'll be a lot of reading, was it Jason? Yes. Yeah, like that stack of paper in front of you, yeah. that represents a, a small portion of what you get to read. <laughs> so, um, but it's a limited funding pool. And it's important that we make decisions that are in the best interest of the city in terms of um, being good stewards of taxpayer dollars and looking at the project holistically, I think will be a benefit. Great. Alderman Karen? Yeah, may I add to that? Because um, I've sat on that committee for the last uh, six years as the alderman's liaison and prior to that. Um, and I think the other thing is that as a group, we've come together and felt that our application and the way that the agencies put those together have to be clarified, have to be specific, so that when we're reading them, it makes it a lot easier for us to understand. Um, and as Mike and Beth said, we were like, as Alderman Wilshire would say, we're we were in little silos. Mm -hmm. And so we were only worrying about what we had, the seven or eight. Yeah, do I look forward to reading <laughs> a stack that high? <laughs> Probably not, but I think that for the betterment of the taxpayers and our agencies as well, so that we're giving the agencies their due justice mm -hmm. and also to make the agencies aware that this isn't just, hello, I'm here, hand me over a check. It's you need to clarify and support the program or idea that you're bringing forward for this money. So um, that's why we were looking for really a diversified group of people. So, um, and of course, the project takes place from January until April, but then of course we meet as a group to go over to make changes because as I said, this is gonna be our first year with these major changes, point systems and things like that. So um, we'll have to come up with I'm sure we'll come up with some ideas or suggestions to improve on it, but I think we've improved over the last three years. And having Carrie Skeener as our liaison and our contact person has been tremendous help to all these commissioners. I think they'll, they'd all agree with that. So, but I thank you and welcome aboard. <laughs> okay, uh, Alderman Lopez. I think it'll be interesting to see how this process evolves um, and how it ends up comparing to the um, Capital Improvement Committee's method, which has similarly a lot of projects coming through, a lot of departments uh, presenting their particular needs um, and expectations, <laughs> and a small group of people that are, you know, reviewing them and making a, a reasonable assessment uh, over a, a specific amount of time. Um, I'm just curious to hear, I guess, from all of the new participants, what kind of major community issues are you aware of now that you would anticipate seeing need be presented for? I'll go. Okay. Um, so I have a, because of my background working in nonprofits, um, I spent um, close to six years working at the Boys and Girls Club, um, but I also went through the Leadership Greater Nashua program. Uh, during which we spent a great deal of time getting to know um, a lot of the areas um, within our community from a social s services standpoint, but also just from an investment and, and business standpoint. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, and certainly we can anticipate um, as, as agencies find their capacity uh, growing from an improving economy, they'll see opportunities to better serve their clients, their um, their constituencies, and opportunities to sort of leverage the uh, the kind of investment that this sort of grant can um, provide to bring in um, large gifts, to bring in the public, um, to gain support, to gain um, buy-in to an investment into a program that should better the entire uh, city uh, from whether it be for children, the elderly, um, housing, veterans, what have you. So there's a lot of really interesting opportunities, and I, I wouldn't actually, um, I, I wouldn't actually um, be so bold as to say where exactly I think they're going to come from because I think it's going to be very varied. Mm -hmm. 
Anybody else? Would like I think to that speak? was. Can I just say that was a great answer because that was yeah. more or less what I was getting at. I wasn't expecting a specific nonprofit to say, "Oh, I'm expecting this person to come and ask for that." But I was asking more about the trends that you see in nonprofits, and I mean. Yeah, I think you pretty much have summarized where nonprofits are right now, that we have a great economy. We don't know how long it will maintain its greatness. And a lot of nonprofits have to make a decision between, you know, do we invest in building up newer programs and trying to reach deeper into the community? Or do we try to just start socking things away for when the inevitable rainstorm comes? So I think that your answer was spot on. Thank you. Alderman Karen. I think over the years, so the agency applications have stayed pretty st steady, anywhere between 30 and 35. You know, some drop off because they've changed uh, their dynamics and what they're doing, or they just don't need any funding, or <coughs> they're not looking for anything. So I, I think the level of agencies doesn't really change, but some of the requests that they put in change, depending on the climate, as you say. Anything further? Um, I, I, I will say that Nashua is unique, um, <clears throat> that we have uh, made a commitment like this to put um, CDB CDBG dollars um, into back into our community through uh, nonprofits. Um, it's something that makes us different. Uh, but it also enhances, I think, um, the nonprofit community here by giving the nonprofits in our community an upper hand, uh, as opposed to in another in another place that would divert the money maybe towards uh, city projects instead. And not to say that there's not uh, a, a good case for both. Uh, I, I think there is, but um, but I think this I think this committee is a testament to the city's commitment uh, behind our nonprofits, and I think it's a wonderful thing. And thank you all very much for uh, for donating your time to the city. Um, means a lot, and I, I wish this uh, I wish this advisory group success uh, going forward in the future. So. Um, with that, unless there's anybody else, um, thank you very much for coming this evening, and we will uh, take up all of your appointments shortly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So next, uh, we have the Cultural Connections Committee, uh, Dominique. Botod, I hope I pronounced that correct. Please come forward. And Kim, I will give you the floor. So, um, so Dominique um, Botod has worked with the mayor's office a lot um, for the past couple of years now. Um, she is certainly no stranger to the Cultural Connections Committee as she has worked with them also. Um, if you haven't had an opportunity to see the studio on Main Street Healing and Cover in Color um, and her work, um, you should. If you look at her resume, it's quite extensive. <coughs> um, and she has a lot of good experience. So she, um, one of the events that she did um, past two years, Franco, Franco, I, and I'm not going to say it right, so I'm going to let uh, Dominique say it. Um, but she's, you know, every time the mayor's office has um, reached out, um, we've done a lot of col a collaborative um, events with Dominique, as has the Cultural Connections Committee. So um, we are very pleased, and the mayor is very pleased, that she has agreed to step on to the committee as a member. Great. Dominique, please introduce yourself. Yes, I am Dominique Bouteau. I am born in France. Um, and I moved to state 20 years ago in 1996, and uh, in Massachusetts, and moved to Nashua in 2009. 
um, when I arrive in Nashua, I say I'm going to study the history of the state, and it was a passion for me to do that. I feel like in love about your state. Then, um, because I am from France, and I find a lot of people coming from Quebec here, mm -hmm. so it, it will be a good idea to organize event for that kind of people. And I organized a francophonie in my studio at the beginning at the Picker building during three years. Um, also, I, we did events at the 30 Temple Street. And this year, I did the francophonie in my studio gallery on Main Street, on 120 Main Street. And it's mainly to bring people together, only have fun, a pleasure to share, a pleasure to, some people know how to sing, so they come to sing. Some people know how to play music, they come to play music. Some, some artists uh, exhibit their artwork, could be francophone or francophile. It means francophone, it means they come from a, Fran <coughs> a French background <coughs> country. And francophile means they love the French. So many people came. I was impressed that f f to see them coming with so much kindness, so much love. And, and this year, I have been so happy to have 15 francophone countries represented for the event. And um, I am so in happy about um, participating, participating to the meeting of the Cultural Connection Committee. Um, with my business, Healing in Color on Main Street, um, as I am a certified dementia practitioner, I give art classes to people with dementia and Alzheimer's disease, <coughs> and also to the caregivers. I am also uh, able to help children with incarcerated parents, people with disabilities, and other people who would like to solve a problem across art therapy. I am an American citizen since 2008, then <laughs> I would like to help. It's the reason I am here. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Uh, <laughs> and thank you for everything that you do. Um, I will open it up uh, the floor for questions uh, or comments. Alderman Lopez. I just like to comment that um, Dominique has worked with the Cultural Connections Committee in the past and is very <laughs> determined, is very passionate, um, and is very um, empowering of the French community uh, here in Nashua. And she's been very inclusive of it too, um, which is, is very important to our city because there's a lot of diverse countries um, that speak France. Um, that are or speak French that are represented here in um, Nashville. And that's part of what the Cultural Connections Committee tries to do is encourage that positive understanding of diversity. So I'm looking very much forward to her involvement um, and participation in the committee. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, I, I, w I would echo that. I mean, I <clears throat> a lot of people think of Nashua as predominantly French-Canadian. Um, it, and it, it it is, but there's also you know a, a large uh, group of of Haitian uh, immigrants. There's uh, folks from France like yourself. There's folks from, uh, and I had some friends from uh, Vietnam growing up. And so, when you think about that, the diversity that exists um, just within French speaking countries is 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 quite. Uh, it, it's big. It's 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 very very diverse, um, and uh, you know it's um, it's good to have I think somebody on the on the committee that uh, can speak the language and to bring those different <coughs> cultures together through language, which I think is is a unique opportunity that we have. And and uh, so thank you for for volunteering your time. Uh, anything further? Seeing uh, nothing further, we will um, take up your appointment in just a little bit. And thank you very much uh, thank you. for volunteering. Thank you very much.
And finally, last but not least, we have the planning board uh, for Maggie Harper as an alternate. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and Kim? Uh, good evening. So the, the mayor would like to thank um, Ms. Harper for stepping forward. So we know that um, with the planning board, there's um, generally some very long evenings um, and some very detailed uh, caseloads. Um, we actually met Ms. Harper because she attended the Nashua City Academy, the first one that we had last year. And when okay. you're talking about long commitments, that was one. It was uh, almost 16 weeks of meeting every week and, and hearing all about the city. Um, so she's had quite an extensive uh, preview of all of our city departments. Um, and we're very pleased that she stepped forward to join the planning board. Great. Um, please introduce yourself. So I'm Maggie Harper. I live at 3 Taft Street. I have been a Nashua resident for over 30 years. My background professionally is real estate and property management. And after going to the Nashua City Academy, I'm an ep empty nester. I decided I was ready to serve in Nashua, so I had a couple of discussions with the mayor and have been to some planning board meetings and felt like that would be the right place that I could serve. Great. Um, I'm going to open it up for questions, comments. Alderman McCarthy. What do you see the role of the planning board as being? Um, well, we have to carry out the master plan of the city, which I have not read the whole thing. It's 368 pages, but I have read some of it. Um, it's a little, it's older, and I'm not sure if uh, the planning board is looking to update it a little bit in the future. Um, but I would be, I would love to be a part of that. And um, I know that we work closely with the board of aldermen that they have to approve any any budgets that there are for the master plan. Um, and. At the meetings, there's been a variety of different cases. Um, one of the last cases I saw was actually uh, almost two hours long, I believe, and it was about subdividing, subdividing a lot. Um, the alderman was there for the ward. There were citizens there to discuss it. It was, it was pretty interesting, actually. I guess I'll just warn you that if in that 358-page master plan you can find two lines that apply to the case that's in front of you, you're really lucky. <laughs> Thank you, Brian. Uh, Alderman Lopez. I want to say I'm impressed by your experience. It looks like you've worked with Canterbury Apartments, you've worked with Brady Sullivan, Remax. You're currently working with um, a major retailer downtown. So I'm happy to see that because I think a lot of the planning board issues and the city's developmental issues, yeah, poor phrasing maybe, but uh, <laughs> the issues the city faces in terms of economic development do revolve around housing and businesses and figuring out how to cooperate um, both within a, a specific area. So yes. I'm definitely excited about the experience that I see here and your ability to maintain attention for a long period of time. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Alderman McCarthy? Yeah, wh how do you... How do you see the process working of balancing the rights of the landowner to develop with the <coughs> concerns of the abutters when when specific projects come in? Well, that's always a touchy subject, obviously, and you have to take into account, you know, both both sides of that. Um, and I, I definitely, I do think there is usually a way to to mediate that type of situation because um, in most cases there's benefits for both sides. And, um, you know, sometimes those things don't happen, but I would say most of the time that you are able to mediate that. So just uh, understanding the, um, that the, the planning board is a, a judicial body. So basically you have to follow the, you know, the law as it's written mm -hmm. um, when you're making decisions. <clears throat> but oftentimes the Board of Aldermen will ask an opinion about certain legislation um, or if we're changing codes, things like that, mm -hmm. you know. So my curiosity is where, 
in, a, in an ideal world, what would your Nashua look like 20 years from now? My Nashua? Yeah. Well, it's heading in the direction that I'm hoping it will go. Um, obviously, I would love to see a train come up here and uh, more housing like what's being built near the river right now. It's spectacular. I, I'm so excited about it. i um, very excited about the Brady Sullivan project in the mm -hmm. mill building. Mm -hmm. It's great. That building was empty for 15 years, and that's yep. really going to bring a lot of life to Nashua. Um, very excited about the new river plan. Um, places for people to be downtown and to really enjoy the river frontage, which is beautiful. It's, it has a lot of history, and um, those are the type of things that I'm really excited about. And I hope that we continue on that direction, making it a just a really great place to move to and, and to live in. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, anything further? Anybody else have any questions or comments? Well, um, thank you very much for uh, volunteering your time. Uh, I know you will be an alternate, but if you've been to the meetings and you've sat through two hours just as a spectator, uh, I think you'll be fine. Uh, <laughs> Sometimes and, um, four hours. <laughs> so uh, I, I wish you the best, and uh, we will take up your appointment shortly. So. Great. Thank you. Oh, yep. Uh, Alderman oh. Lopez. Sorry. Just I'm hopeful that in a situation where you felt – an answer represented common sense, but you also had a rubric with which to test that common sense. You did so rather than just saying, well, this is evidence, so let's try to make common sense fit within the rubric rather than using the rubric to test the common sense. Because it is a legal body, mm -hmm. and I think using that ability to test something logically is, is a very important piece of that. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much again. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. So that concludes the interview section. Uh, so we will move on to communications, of which we have none, and we have no licenses. Uh, so we will move straight to the appointments by the mayor. Uh, do I have a motion? <coughs> thank you, Mr. Chairman. A motion to recommend the confirmation of the following appointments by the mayor. To the Business and Industrial Development Authority, Deborah Novotny, for a term to expire September 30th, 2018, and Carl Andrade, for a term to expire September 13th, 2019. To the Citizens Advisory Commission for Community Grants, Beth Quarm Totem, for a term to expire October 1st, 2018, Patricia Casey and Jason Talerski, for terms to expire October 1st, 2019 and Michael Apfelberg for a term to expire October 1st, 2020. To the Cultural Connections Com uh, Committee, Dominique Boutard for a term to expire September 30th, 2020. To the National Airport Authority, Sandra Cushing Adams for a term to expire August 31st, 2018, and Farrell T. Woods for a term to expire August 31st, 2022. To the Planning Board, Maggie Harper and Daniel Kelly for terms to expire March 31st, 2020. Thank you. You've all heard the motion. Uh, any comments on that? Alderman Lopez? I just want to clarify. I don't know if I might have spaced out a little bit, but okay. I heard Michael Joseph uh, for a term to expire Michael uh, October 1st, 2018, right? The, those are appointments by the president, uh, and we'll do those in a separate. Okay. That's what I was wondering. Yep. I was like, I missed two names here. Nope. No. <laughs> any further Questions or comments? You've all heard the motion. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And the motion carries. And now we will move to appointments by the President of the Board of Aldermen. Mr. Chairman, I move to recommend the confirmation of the following appointments by the President of the Board of Aldermen to the Citizens Advisory Commission for Community Grants. Michael Joseph for a term to expire October 1st, 2018, and Jennifer Bishop. Bishop Saucier for a term to expire October 1st, 2020. Thank you. You've all heard the motion. Any questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And the motion carries. Thank you all for coming this evening. Appreciate it. We do have other business uh, on the agenda. Um, under new business ordinances, we have ordinance 1745. 
moving parking enforcement to the Office of Economic Development in the Mayor's office. Uh, do I have a motion? Alderman Lopez. Final passage for motion. 017 -045. Motion is to recommend final passage of 017 -045. Mr. Cummings, I see you here. Would you like <laughs> to come up and speak to this? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. For the record, Tim Cummings, Director of Economic Development for the City. Uh, just very quickly, what is before you is uh, an administrative change where we're seeking to put parking enforcement, which is currently housed over in the police department, with parking operations. Um, essentially, this would uh, create a more streamlined and unified parking operations process mm -hmm. overall for the city. One of the goals and intents of this is to make sure that we make this as seamless as possible, where we'll be looking to keep the service, uh, service delivery the exact same. Essentially, all we're looking to do is move it uh, where it's currently housed to uh, differing departments so we can hopefully create some efficiencies and uh, create a higher level of customer service by making sure we uh, streamline the communication process. This has been discussed, as I understand it, over the years, um, and it's finally gotten to a place now where it can be uh, accomplished, and the police are in support of this change. Okay, so that, that was my first question. So the, the police commission has looked at, at this and, and supports this? Correct. Um, are the how many employees are there right now doing this job? Uh, currently, right now, the number of employees is three. Okay, it is, it is budgeted for four. The pol uh, the my understanding is one of the parking enforcement personnel actually this summer was hired as a Nashua police officer, and because the police department and the city were working on this various issue, they didn't want to do any hiring until this was resolved. So will this require a transfer of the from the police budget into the how how is that going to work if you don't mind Uh sure Mr. Chairman um my understanding is there's a separate account that was created that basically parking enforcement um oh, uses that's right. yeah. and so the management of that fund though would move over to to my office okay and and it would be my office that would be responsible for that account okay um, two other questions. Are these employees union? No. My other question is the, the vehicles that they currently use, mm -hmm. are those being transferred with Ye the positions over to your department? Yes, along with all other office type of equipment necessary for them to perform their duties. And we've been working that all with the police department. Are they still going to be housed over at the police department, or are they going to be moved somewhere? No, they would they would be moved out of the police department, and we would look to put them in the Elm Street garage office. <laughs> okay. I, I mean, I, I I certainly think it's a great idea. It's it's why I, I jumped on to be a co-sponsor. Um, I'm glad that the details are worked out. Um, I think that the um, it's been a long time coming. Um, you know, it, 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 like you had said, it's been one of those things that, especially since I've been on the board of Alderman where it's, it's been, well, you know, we'd really like to do this, but, and it's one of those frustrating things that just never happened. Um, you know, and it has no reflection on, on your department, the police department, the employees, everybody's great. And I think, uh, I think it's going to be, it's just, it just makes sense to have parking all in one spot. You know, yes. you'll have better oversight over what goes on there. Um, you know, and as these things change, you know, hopefully you, you can hire somebody else, um, maybe get the hours adjusted by the new person that you hired so that we can cover the extreme ends of the, uh, of the day. Um, and I, 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 I do. I just, I, I think it's a great, uh, I think it's a great thing, and, and I wholeheartedly support it. So, thank you, Alderman McCarthy. Yeah, going back to your initial remarks, I'm not sure how the average citizen will welcome a higher level of customer service from parking enforcement. But <laughs> <laughs> um, Fair enough. 
The question I had was um, it, with the move of the offices to the high street, to the, did you say high street or Elm Street? Elm, Elm, street, Elm street, garage. street Garage. Does that mean we'll have a higher presence of uh, employees in the garage, in, well, that garage and the Elm Street Garage? Yes. Because I think that's something that I constantly hear um, things about the garages. And I, I, I will point out that having asked the police chief about those, there is little or no evidence that the garages are not particularly safe. I would describe them as occasionally unsavory, but, but I, I, don't, I don't think anyone in the audience ought to have any fear of going in the garages. However, I think having more presence of city employees through the garages can help to discourage some of the unsavoriness, first of all, and um, assuage the fears of the public regarding them. They are great places to park. They are always available, and we will strive to make them better. So I actually look forward to this change for that reason, if nothing else. Uh, so just to quickly follow up on that, Mr. Chairman, I agree with everything that President McCarthy just said, and, and that's one of the reasons why we're doing it. Great. Anything uh, further? Alderman Lopez? Yeah, I just want to double check. Um, so if somebody does get a ticket, do they follow the same process that exists right now? They, they would follow the same process as they do right now. Okay. okay. That's where the customer service comes in. Yep. Yeah. Alderman Karen? Yeah. Well, I wasn't in favor of this. Um, I, I really had some concerns because I get a lot of complaints about parking issues. Um, but I did have a nice conversation with the chief, and um, he said that the police commission and himself, they were all for it, and there was no change in the budget because the uh, money that is used is from the fines, so that wasn't going to be an issue and uh, that they were going to be moving to another location. So... Um, with that, because they're the ones that you want to get the answers to. Um, and when he said that and he was he had no issues, then I will uh, vote yes for this. And I wish you luck. <laughs> <laughs> Alderman McCarthy. If, if I might, through the chair, inquire to uh, Alderman Karen just what the initial concerns were. Well, I... My concern was how was this going to be handled if there was some major issues or late at night or what have you. But as the chief said, um, we can always call the police department if there is a problem because we do have issues in some of those small streets um, with mm -hmm. parking, and I get them. So he assured me that that wouldn't change, that it was just a matter of moving you know, a group over. So <laughs> I'm fine, and I agree with Alderman McCarthy. If there's a presence in the Elm Street garage, that's uh, a plus for us. Yeah, Alderman McCarthy. I assume the the uh, enforcement uh, personnel have radios. Correct. And they will continue to have radios so they can contact the department at night if they need to? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it, ultimately, obviously, the the police are there to enforce our ordinances, and you know, if there's if there's a problem, they're going to take care of it. And I don't see that that would be any different whether the department stayed over in the police department or not. So, um, and I know that if the chief had an issue with this, somebody from the police department would be here tonight. So, <laughs> the fact that they're not here, um, and not to say that I don't believe what you. And I don't believe you, but I also know the police department and they would definitely be here. So I've sponsored stuff where I didn't know they were coming and all of a they're sudden, no, oh, well. No, they're not shy. <laughs> <laughs> um, anything further? Motion is to uh, recommend final uh, passage of 017045. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And the motion carries. Thank you. Uh, Tabled in committee, we have uh, Ordinance 17041, which is amending the composition and purpose of the Downtown Improvements Committee. And they did uh, comment in on this. So um, if I could indulge the committee to have a motion to take this from the table. Alderman Lopez. Take this from the table. Motion is to take 017041 from the table. All those in favor say aye. 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 And motion carries. Um, 
I will go ahead and um, move to recommend uh, final passage of 017041. Um, what this was doing was simply adding two full-time members to the Downtown Improvement Committee and two alternates. Um, we wanted an opportunity for the Downtown Improvement Committee to weigh in on this, uh, and they did at their meeting on Friday. Uh, there was no objection to the uh, ordinance, um, and there was very, from what I could see in the minutes, very little discussion. So, um, with Mr. that, Chairman, there, yep. was there was short discussion, but there was a motion <coughs> that, that passed unanimously to recommend passage. Okay, great. Uh, is there any further discussion on the motion to recommend final passage? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 And the motion carries. Uh, thank you. Um, is there any uh, general discussion? Seeing none, public comment. I don't see anybody from the public. Remarks by Alderman, Alderman Lopez. This weekend, the opiate awareness walk um, is taking place from Greeley Park. Anybody who has been touched or affected by opioid addiction um, and wants to show solidarity and raise awareness of the issue, please join us. I'm not sure how much more awareness we need, but awareness of the strategies that work, the successes that can happen, I think that's helpful for everybody. Great. Uh, Alderman LeBron. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd just like to mention that uh, this past Saturday, the 14th, the legislative softball game took place, and we raised a little over $10,000 for homeless veterans. Nice. Excellent. Uh, any further remarks? Uh, oh, Alderman McCarthy. With regard to opiates, anybody who didn't see 60 Minutes last night should try to get a hold of it and watch it. Yes, I did see it. Very it good. <coughs> Any uh, further discussion? If not, do I have a motion? Motion to adjourn. <laughs> motion is to adjourn by Halderman LeBron. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries, and we are adjourned at 7.50. If I can't get the motion, I can be the first to vote. <laughs>